Hello, everybody, and welcome after quite a long break. I mean, two weeks uh, was my break that I have taken from this channel. Uh, before we start, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, click the notification bell, because we're going to be talking about another subject connected uh, to, uh, to women's health today again. Um, and if you are watching on my private profile on Facebook, uh, you can skip away now because I'm going to be talking about periods and, and about endometriosis and my story as well. But before I get into that, um, you can see I'm going to give you a little live update. And again, if you're watching on a replay, there are timestamps down below. Uh, so you can skip that part and go straight to endometriosis part. But for all of those of you who want to tune in, um, I'm just going to do a little brief intro and uh, and let you know where I have been and, and what have been happening. Because uh, clearly I have yet another different background behind me. Uh, so I'm in yet another apartment. And no, I do not enjoy, uh, enjoy moving all the time. However, if you have seen one of my previous videos, you know that uh, we've been through quite a lot of um, big problem with the apartment that, uh, that we have had. Oh, we have already people tuning in. Hello there. <laughs> Uh, so you know that we have been, uh, me and James have been through quite a lot of apartment troubles and uh, and that we had a big problem with the mold in our previous apartment. So that definitely took a toll. And as I said before, before I go through and, and speak about uh, endometriosis, I will tell you overall how, how much I have been... Uh, how I have felt um, recently health-wise, because of course, if you are watching my channel, you know, it's centered about women's health, about PCOS, endometriosis and similar uh, hypothyroidism and all the other things that I have in one person. Um, so another thing that I want to address, short hair. Uh, I donated hair for a cancer foundation. I wanted to cut my hair anyway, so I'm not going to say that there was this wonderful, beautiful thing that I have done. However, I think that if you're a person who has long hair is planning to cut it, maybe consider cutting them a little bit more short and and donated to to cancer foundation by the way if you're watching right now because there are a few people watching make sure you say hi tell me where you're watching from uh, i would love to connect you guys and and get to know my audience a little bit more because i know you're watching uh but i don't know who you are so uh if it goes to health uh, I would briefly talk about uh, having PCOS endometriosis and uh, hypothyroidism in one and uh, and what's been happening in my life briefly. Uh, we have been um, going through a period of extreme stress. And every time I say that, there is more extreme period of stress that comes up. And unfortunately, um, the health shows up um, there's only so many things that uh, you can do to prevent it and if you follow me on instagram which is agatapavlak.ig uh, you probably have seen me talking about um, stress and pcos and stress and um, hypothyroidism and all of that because uh, of course uh, as long as we run on adrenaline most of us are usually fine uh, but as soon as we burn out of adrenaline um, that's where stuff start happening. So if it goes to PCOS, you know, we get a horrible stress response. We have heightened blood sugars, horrible hungers or no hunger at all. Uh, we start getting gut, gut issues. That's for all of us, whether whether we have PCOS and endometriosis or not. Uh, of course, in periods of stress, the, the demand for a thyroid hormone is also higher. So you end up being fatigued and tired and and all of these types of stuff. And uh, if any of you is a business owner, uh, and is going through something like we have with uh, with the mold and everything. Um, you know that it can really take a take a toll, not having a safe space to rest and uh, and have a good sleep and stuff like that. So, for sure, uh, my health and my mental health has been uh, quite difficult at the minute. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, and as you know, of course, women with PCOS have already um, are already quite prone to anxiety and depression, and definitely with the heightened periods of stress, anxiety is something that uh, that I struggled with, and I and I talked about openly uh, before. Uh, however, few people are watching. Why aren't you saying hi? Come on, say hi to me. I'm, I'm really not going to bite. Uh, so I'm going to talk about a little bit about endometriosis. So again, for those of you who are watching on my private profile and you don't want to listen about period talk, you can click off right now. Uh, but I am a person who also has endometriosis, <laughs> not only PCOS, not only hypothyroidism, but endometriosis on top of that all. Uh, so 
what is endometriosis and here we are getting um to the gist and then i'm going to tell you my story as well uh, let me know by the way in the comments if you can hear me okay because i have a brand new mic uh, so i hope you can you can hear me quite well so what is endometriosis endometriosis is um is a disease that still doesn't know what happens in certain individuals and in certain doesn't uh, so saying it bluntly and disgustingly i'm just going to explain to you what happens and um yeah, just in a normal terms, because we all can find uh, scientific articles, but sometimes they're very difficult to understand. Um, so um, what happens in, with endometriosis? Every woman, when they have period, we have a little bit of a backflow. Uh, so we have a little bit of uterine tissue going up to our um, tubes and like to our ovary area. And uh, in a healthy woman, this blood is disposed of, is being you know, thrown out and um, and kind of disposed uh, by our body. However, in the person with the endometriosis, that doesn't happen. Uh, and that um, the tissue starts growing inside our bodies. Uh, so in, um, in many cases, it grows inside of your stomach, but it has been found as far as in people's brains, in lungs, uh, inside of stomach cavity, basically everywhere uh, you can find it everywhere in your body because once it gets inside your stom of stomach cavity it can actually travel around um, in your body and um as you probably know i hope that my wi-fi is okay it shows low signal um <laughs> as you probably know as well when you have your period or when you're bleeding your endometrium Endometrium is a tissue on the uterus, is a uterine, uterus lining, and, you know, it's getting disposed of, right? It's, it's just going off and it's going out through your canal. Um, and this is triggered by specific hormones. And, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole hormone fluctuation right now. But uh, what happens is, yeah, you get triggered by hormones, hormones drop, and that your lining is uh, coming out. Now, if you have endometriosis and if you have uh, endometrial tissue inside your stomach cavity, lungs, brain, whatever, every time you get period, it's being triggered by the same hormones. So in, you can have internal bleeding from that tissue and uh, you can have uh, yeah, bleeding wherever the endometrial tissue is now located. Now, another thing that might happen is that your organs start being connected. And it kind of looks like it's connected by a spider web with like little black dots. Um, and there is really nothing that can be done to fix it permanently. Now, if I want to go to my story, because I think some stuff will be good to explain on the basis of my story. Um, as you know, if you have been watching my channel before, I always had problems with hormones. I always had problems with periods, on regular periods or sorts of stuff like that. And I also had a lot of pain uh, during my period. And uh, again, period, period, period. Um, but, um, you know, of course, you know, I have, I have family members, I have sister, I have my mom uh, who um, also had pain. So I thought that my pain was normal and, until it wasn't. Um, so up until this moment, I don't know what things were triggered by my PCOS and which things were triggered by my endometriosis, but the pain was definitely endometriosis. And how I got it discovered um, was that I started missing periods, I think, uh, oh, I know. Yeah, I had very regular periods and I was missing periods. And then I was planning to go to my doctor, but my doctor was on holiday. Uh, and uh, it was an older doctor. One of my best friends is in this world uh, because of her, because she helped her mom with infertility. Uh, and I was at the time 21, I think. And uh, she was on the holiday, so I had to find a different doctor because I really felt bad. And my mom told me, well, come to me with me to this guy and he's gonna check you up. And he also has ultrasonogram machine in his office. Uh, so he will be able to test you there and then. Um, and I, I went for it. And it's also worth mentioning that this previous doctor, even though she knew uh, what problems I had, she never ordered an ultrasonogram um, for me in any sort of shape or form, outside, inside, nothing. So I go to this other doctor, uh, and she was male doctor this time. Of course, uh, all the all my women friends know that if you have gone for the first time to um, male OBGYN, it is a bit stressful. But I went. He tested me, and he said that I had a big uh, cyst on my ovary, 
and this uh, that it's, it's called cho chocolate cyst. I don't know if it's also called that in English, but that's what it was called in Polish, and it suggests that it is endometriosis. Now, uh, when I found that out, I actually weirdly I had a it's 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 interesting how you tell this story, how tangled it is in your personal life. Because I had a dentist, which I still have the best dentist in the world, um, that I was quite close with. And I think I was between doctor's appointments and I knew that somehow I knew that his wife also had a lot of issues. So I brought it up with him and he said that he actually knows specialists that is like in my city, but he's very well known specialist in Poland uh, for that sort of thing. So for endometriosis. Uh, so I paid quite a big money at the time uh, to have a visit with him. And um, on the visit, it was, of course, confirmed. But you cannot 100% confirm um, endometriosis until you have, you know, pathology made. So they take a piece of tissue and they check it under the microscope and, and they verify w whether it is what it is or whether it is a normal cyst. There is many types of cysts on the ovaries. Uh, but yeah, it was quite substantial, uh, substantial cyst. Um, so, uh, after talking to him, after, of course, being on birth control to kind of get it under control so I don't have at least such a big bleeds, um, I um, was told that I'm going to have to have a surgery. Uh, nobody knew to which extent my endometriosis was, um, but, you know, sometimes even if um, they are not sure if they will be able to remove something or in cases of certain women, endometriosis can just grow like, like this net inside, which still causes a lot of pain, but it's not as clearly visible as a cyst is on the ultrasonogram. So uh, when I actually was diagnosed and I had that cyst, they expected that it is endometriosis with how dense it was, with the color that it had and so on on the, you know, it, probably more dense because it's a blood cyst, not like liquid cyst. Uh, but I was still um, prescribed laparoscopy. At least I knew that I had something to be removed uh, because uh, sometimes some women don't even know if they have it and they have to have a laparoscopic surgery to actually even find out whether what's happening, you know, because it might be something completely different. They might have a problem, yeah, with pain and suspected endometriosis, but uh, yeah, they have to be opened up and it has to be seen. And because of that, many women as well um, are being, you know, thrown to the side uh, because the only way to fully confirm endometriosis is opening someone up and having laparoscopic surgery. There is no other way, uh, especially if you have it a little bit more invisible with visible cysts, to determine if you have it or not. So many women are living in excruciating pain uh, for years. And being said that this is normal, you know, women have pain on their periods and that's it. You just have to live with it. And I know that that's a case for many women, especially in US uh, that are following me and that I talk to. Um, and uh, not only there, in all over the world, uh, because it's such a weird diagnosis. I mean, if you think about it from the health um, system point of view, every time someone, you know, says that they have horrible pain, horrible pain is also, it's not objective thing to say. My horrible pain is not your horrible pain. Um, so people tend to think like, oh, she's just have low pain tolerance and it's probably nothing because of course having surgery and you know recovery and everything in hospital costs a lot of money. So that is a big problem that women have. However, uh, coming back to my story, um, I knew that I'm gonna have to have a surgery and uh, it was scheduled, I think something crazy like eight months in the future. Uh, now, it was difficult to um, schedule this surgery because it should be in specific point in cycle. Um, I think it was in the first half, actually, so it should be right after bleeding, so your endometrium is not that thick, uh, and it's not when it's bleeding. You can still do it, but it's a little bit more risky because, of course, if you have a tissue inside of your stomach that is bleeding, it's going to be more difficult to see it and, and get rid of it, right, because you just will have blood. Um, so it was difficult because, of course, if you don't bleed regularly, it's difficult to, to know when you're going to be in that phase of cycle. Uh, and I was living in, the Sweden, in Sweden at the time. And uh, I remember I had it scheduled, I think, for August? No, yes, I think, uh, for August. 
and then I got a phone call that they can move it up to June. Now, I had two holidays <laughs> coming up back then um, from like mid-June to mid-July, I think, or maybe it was the whole July. And I was going two weeks to Lanzarote, two weeks to Turkey, great holidays. And of course, if I would have a surgery, that would be out of the question. I already had a booking and everything. So I decided um, not to go with the June and to stick uh, with August. Now, on, uh, on the other side, <laughs> It was horrible because I all my holidays I was worried about having having the surgery, but you know at least it was the plan that I expected. Now um, I went to my holidays. Um, I got my period on the last day of holiday when I was actually in Turkey, forty five degrees Celsius outside. I we already you know how sometimes you have to give a give a room uh, back and then wait twelve hours for your bus to come to but then take you back wherever airport or whatever, um yeah exactly then and I remember not having a room being in forty five degree weather and having pain so horrendous um that there was no way of me of sitting I I probably drank water I can't remember it was eight years ago um. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't stand up. I was crawling. People looked at me weird because I was by the table, just crawled under the table pretty much. Um, and yeah, and then I went uh, straight back to Poland and my surgery was in Poland, actually. Uh, the surgery was fine. Um, I The hospital was horrendous. <laughs> um, absolutely horrible. Um, because you know, just the word was very old school and it, because it was connected to fertility issues, it was also a lot of high risk pregnancies. And the system was so old school that the only way to call a nurse was actually press a button and the alarm would go next to the room. So of course, you know, if you, if you're in high risk pregnancy and you're very close to the labor, whatever happens, whatever pain you're going to have, you're going to call the nurse, but the system was so horrendous. There was no, not possibility to, to sleep because you were woken up by the alarm all the time. Anyway, I had the surgery first thing in the morning. And I was uh, wheeled in, my mom was with me, uh, well, not to a surgery, but in the hospital, I was wheeled in. And then um, when I come out, I remember asking what time it was. Um, just tell my mom, tell my mom, mom I, I'm okay. Tell my mom, I'm okay. And then I went out and um, I was actually let out of the hospital day after. So this whole day I slept. I think next day I was still in the hospital or maybe already next day I was let out. Because let me remind you, this is laparoscope surgery so you just get two two little holes around your ovaries and one um bigger one in your belly button uh for the you know gas to pump your stomach so they ha can have visibility now uh the doctor in the morning came over and uh he said uh yeah if you want to know a little bit more details i don't have my papers with me with the notes uh but come over around this and this time to my office and i'm gonna let you know uh then i went there i waited for getting the papers to go out and after that, I was supposed to meet a doctor. And all of a sudden, I see him, <laughs> see him leaving, going home. And I, I got up and I started like running as much as I could running, like crouched down. And I was running after him and trying to, uh, to find out uh, what, how bad was my endometriosis. And imagine that I'm the only person who can find that out. He's going. He knows I'm straight after surgery and I'm chasing him down, bent over in like summer dress because that was the only loose thing not to catch my stitches. Um, to find out how bad my endometriosis was. And it turned out that it was pretty bad. Um, so what I told you at the beginning uh, was that I had a quite a big substantial cyst on one of my ovaries, on my left one. Um, and um, it turned out that the reason why I had this horrendous, awful pain was that the cyst on my ovary was connecting my ovary. It was like ovary cyst, and cyst was also uh, connected to my lower intestine. So every time I was bleeding, um, not only I had cramps, and not only I already had a big cyst on my ovary, but it was pulling all my intestines. And, you know, well, clearly it should be pulling them, right? <laughs> so it was pulling them down. And also I had a little bit of tissue, you know, around that area and on the back of my intestine. Thankfully, they said that uh, they managed to salvage quite a lot of my ovary and they managed to, you know, not hurt my intestines, thankfully. Um, so they managed to do quite a good job. And that's why I went to this guy because he was an expert in the field. And uh, 
Of course, I got a little bit scared. I still had to wait for the results, confirmation results that it was endometriosis because they still have to go through whole pathology and stuff like that. And I got those results like two weeks later. Now, um, if it goes to recovery, it was okay. I don't remember big issues apart from the fact that I got an inflammation of my veins and they, <laughs> they told me that if if you get numbing in your arms on your, or your legs, uh, go straight to the ER or... Oh my God, James Wilkin. Uh, I uh, something like that? Or am I talking, you know, the, the admission center in the hospital, I can never remember. Uh, so that, that I should go there because I can have a blood clot from surgery. So, um, and it also turned out that I couldn't take off my stitches week after because my surgeon ended up in the, uh, in the hospital as well himself. Uh, so I ended up in the ER <laughs> with the stitches and uh, numbing hand. Um, because I just thought, okay, I need a heparin shot. Of course, it turned out my luck that um, I had to wait around six hours and I thought I'm just going to get heparin shot and I'm going to be released. Uh, but this hospital had, um, um, I don't know, kind of a shift uh, for the car crashes. So they had multiple very serious injuries. So I ended up waiting something like eight hours just to find out that I didn't have to come in and that they cannot take my stitches and that um, I just have inflammation of a shallow veins that's how it's called in polish so that the nurses probably opened my iv a little bit too quick so i don't even need a heparin shot so they told me if that happens to go for a heparin shot but it turned out i didn't even need it so that was amazing um but overall recovery after that and uh, after finding wait there's another good story uh i had to find some surgeon that is going to take my stitches out right because the one in the belly button you don't take out they're dissolvable but the ones uh, on the sides you have to um so this was just like a little you know thingy uh, and i found a private private doctor a and D, okay. A and D is called emergency in Britain. Uh, so um, when I found a doctor, like private surgeon, and you know, in this private practices, sometimes when you have all sorts of uh, medical professionals under one roof, you have um, you know very often retired doctors that don't want to work in uh, A and E or in the ER anymore, and they just. Uh, you know get a little extra income so i found that lady she was i think 80 years old she had the thickest glasses in the world and she had to take out my stitches she ended up doing a really good job with one but with the other she pulled like a chunk of skin and it was uh, it left me with like a little hole so she you know you know when you see american films they have always like a cut on the on the head and they have like those little plasters that they use instead of stitches that's what she had to use because she basically pulled a piece of meat from my stomach I'm of course being super dramatic right now um but yeah healing was okay uh, now what happens after uh, you had um uh, surgery and after you have recovered you know i could lift things after two weeks because i was going back to sweden so i needed to lift my suitcase my small suitcase and after that you're being put on a therapy uh, where they stop your period completely for nine months. And this is very strong hormones. Um, that can, of course, influence everything, um, how you feel in general, because they basically put you into menopause uh, for nine months, just to make sure that everything heals and you don't get any any bleeding at all. Um, so I've been put on that. And I remember now, now when I think about it, because I remember that time, funny enough, in the meantime, I moved to Berlin. So I remember being in Berlin, being in a horrible mental state. And um, I'm wondering if it also had something to do with this super, you know, being put on artificial menopause uh, or not. Uh, could be, I don't know. I will never know. Uh, however, I I think apart from that, physically, I was quite okay on those pills. And after that, the thing is that they have few different approaches. As you, if, if you know me, you know that I've been living in Poland, in Sweden, in Germany. Now I'm living in Spain. And each of those countries have different approaches to this disease, um, which is very good to know for all of you who are struggling with it. Because in Poland, for example... Uh, they decide to put you on a normal birth control to kind of make sure that you don't have any, you know, spikes of hormones that can turn into very strong bleeding to keep your bleeding under control. But they give you typical birth control and uh, they tell you you have to take it because otherwise your endometriosis can get bad and you're going to have multiple surgeries on and on and on. Now, um, so I was on normal birth control and I was just said that I have to be on it 
indefinitely unless one day I want to try for a child and then I could go off it. Uh, what happened though is uh, that I moved to the patch that was just more convenient and patches, if you know, especially Evra patches are quite strong. Um, so I've been on them and I have moved, well, I have been to Sweden then for a while and I thought, okay, instead of getting prescription all the time from my, uh, from my Polish doctor, I'm going to move to, to the Swedish doctors. So I went to the Swedish doctor. I told them I had endometriosis. I told them I'm on this patch and she's like, no, 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 no. And you're taking breaks. You're taking three weeks and week off. You absolutely shouldn't do it. Um, and that you have to be on, on the birth control all the time. We usually use different type of birth control or different types of hormones to stop your period completely. But because you bought already so many packs of these patches for like six months, just stick them on, don't do any breaks, um, and you're going to be fine. Uh, so that's what I did. <laughs> After four months uh, being on the strong, strong hormones, my bleeding was completely like in the middle. I, I started bleeding, couldn't stop it. It wouldn't stop. Then I, then they told me to go off it for like two days, put it back on. It's still, it was a nightmare. Um, even though I never had a problem before. And four months in, being on those patches that I'm reminding you, the only reason why I was on the patch, because they were like, oh, you got so many packages. So yeah, use it in the way it shouldn't really be used but then we will prescribe you different hormones. Like hormones are a freaking thing to play with. Um, so um, yeah, after four months, I remember I was working as a makeup artist, if you don't know. And I was in my makeup store and I think I had some makeup appointment um, at, this mo at this moment because I started to have migraines with aura. So I started losing vision in one side of my eyes. Um, like on, on my right side, especially left was tense, I think. And on the right, I started losing, losing vision. And of course, it got me concerned, especially that it didn't happen once. It happened multiple times. At the same time, I think I started to have insulin resistance problems. I was overtraining and I had a big problem with insulin resistance, PCOS at the same time. And, uh, and my thyroid was off. Everything was off, basically. So when I started to have these horrible migraines, I went to the doctors and they took me to MRI. Um, turned out that I have some micro changes, but, you know, apparently MRIs are so good nowadays and they didn't used to be before. And now they are so much more available that probably majority of us have those little changes. So nothing horrible happened. However, because I started to have these migraines with Aura, and they were concerned that I might have a higher risk of a blood clot and stroke uh, because of, well, I was basically overdosed on birth control, but because of that. Uh, so um, I was taken off birth control and that's where the plot thickens uh, because um, many people told me that if I'm not going to be on birth control, my endometriosis will grow back, will grow back very quickly. However, in the um, when I was researching it, God, I'm waffling on for 28 minutes. When I was researching it, um, I have found a theory that endometriosis, and it was from some wacky guy from US, that endometriosis can be kind of a positional issue. And now if I can show you, I know it for years that one of my, tell me if the sound is still okay, um, one of my hips is a little bit forward and I think it's actually left that is forward and I had endometriosis on the left over. So I've heard this theory that if you have any pressure, which I also heard from my physiotherapist that don't you have a pressure here on your, you know, lady organs, as he said, and I said, yes, um, that it might press on a nerve, made tube not work properly and therefore it will not empty the blood correctly. And if you fix that, it will never grow back. And it just so happened that at the time I was working out quite a lot. I did hurt my hip, uh, but I was working out quite a lot. And I was working out on my hip position and uh, on, you know, full body uh, proper exercises that were supposed to help with my posture. And after that, after I have been working out, believe it or not, but my endometriosis was never confirmed again. I have less time I had because I don't know, maybe it's back. I don't I don't feel like it would be back. I think I would have pain if it would be. Um, but maybe I still have it to some extent. Um, but uh, since last time I had, oh, it was over a year ago because of our beautiful situation in the world uh, with traveling. But um, 
it was a while since I had ultrasonogram, probably one and a half years, but I have no reason to suspect that it grew back. And for almost six years, it hasn't grown back, out of which uh, I think now four years I'm off birth control. So everything, everything that every doctor told me is that it should be growing back, it will grow back, um, and I might have to have multiple surgeries. Endometriosis is also not something that passes. It's not something that you can cure. You're always prone to it almost, and you never know when the flare-up is going to happen. But it's also very important to know that women uh, go through flare-ups of endometriosis when they have horrible pain, not only during their period, but overall, and high levels of inflammation. So it never happened to me. And uh, right now, it seems like it's under control. Of course, I might in the future have to have another surgery. Um, nobody knows how really, uh, you know, my insights look like, because as I told you before, you really need to have it verified by, by laparoscopic surgery if there is nothing obvious like a cyst. But at least cyst didn't grow back. And, um, and yeah, I've been working on my health ever since. And uh, endometriosis is horrible. Uh, disease and it's uh, absolutely it's invisible it hurts as hell because if you have been listening to this whole thing you know that basically it can happen that your organs are being pulled apart uh, you can have internal bleeding and stuff like that so it is absolutely horrible and a lot of women still suffer in silence and they're still being silenced by a lot of doctors especially old school doctors that are kind of like you're a woman that's gonna happen it's gonna hurt you deal with it there are also other doctors that just say you should get pregnant and then it's going to disappear, which, yeah, for the duration of a pregnant pregnancy, it will stop. Uh, and sometimes after, it, it seems like it can change women's uh, hormonal profile, but that is not the cure um, for anything. And it does not say that it's going to always work. Um, so, yeah, that's that. That's my endometriosis story. Um, leave me a thumbs up if you manage to. Uh, to stick through this whole thing. Um, so leave me a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified about my future videos. And if I can make a little bit more outro, um, I really sincerely hope that I will be able to appear here regularly again. However, as I told you before, my life is a big tornado right now. And I'm trying to stay healthy but I'm going to try to take you on this journey as well. So thank you for watching and I will see you very soon. Kisses. Love you guys.